Okay. Oh, six canatoni. Pleasant morning. It is what? December 1st. Sunday, December 1st, 2019. In the lunar cycle, Itkaneko Kotoi test when the rivers freeze over. Got just a little breeze going on out here, pre dawn. Roads are drifting slightly. And I'm headed to Spopikimi to do my usual Sunday morning walk and talk. Probably Carol will show up and my my uh, one solid walk and talk partner. And we'll see if anybody else. Eesh, a little bit drifty here. Yeah, we're just at the South Pond area where the bullberry bushes are, and there was a northern shrike hanging out on one of the, I think that might be a honeysuckle tree, there might be a bullberry, I'm not sure, one of the prominent trees. So that was the second northern shrike that I've seen in two days and in two different parks and we don't see them very often here. So I don't I don't really know their uh their migration patterns or their phenology at all. But now that I've seen two in two days I'm going to be looking out for them. All the little birds need to be glassed. <laughs> Thought it was a robin. Oh, I missed the good part. <laughs> Go back and do it again. <laughs> Redo. <laughs> Ooh, sun is just coming up over the uh, coolie rim. Should get a glimpse here pretty quick. Alright, I'm just headed up Bridge Drive from Spobikimi now. I'm going to go visit the West Side Savon Foods, take a look at their trees, their Christmas trees, because I was thinking, uh, Chelsea and the kids are out on the reserve, she's working, the, and the kids are on the, at their grandparents' house. They're not going to be home till like 8, 9 o'clock tonight. It would be cool if when they got home there was a Christmas tree set up, not decorated or anything, I'll leave that for them, but just, just to get a tree there. It is December 1st now, so it's uh, <laughs> it's valid. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that, and then probably before I go home, uh, stop by at the beaver scene on the other side of the river, and just to confirm that everything's kind of ice locked on that canal, then we can start working this winter on the longer term plans or the plans for how to monitor these things and deal with them in, when the thaw comes, but we'll go check that out. Woohoo, down to 40 bucks. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That one looks pretty symmetrical. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's gonna be the one. Right there. Just in that second aisle. Okay, here we are at the frozen canal. Haven't taken the Christmas tree home yet. Just thought I'd stop off here, check the beavers, and then when I go home, I'm home. <laughs> home for the day. Um, actually, I'm enjoying being outside, so might even go explore something else. Haven't decided yet, but for right now, we're going to go check and see what what's going on at the beaver site. And then I can maybe start up some kind of initial report um, to bring to the city and to the naturalists and this kind of a thing with suggestions for how we might proceed over the winter. Um, <laughs> some people way out there on the levee with their dog just at the beaver site two dogs i saw walking in i saw a couple of white-tailed deer run across the levee no doubt pressured by the people with the dogs <laughs> something was walking down there on the on the ice not sure what, might have been a coyote. Anyway, let's go look at the beavers. Here we are, and as expected, it's completely frozen over. It's probably a, a pretty good layer of ice even by now. They do have a, a, a small food cache still in there, but they were not able to replenish nearly what I took so they are gonna have some hardship they're gonna have to figure something out hopefully they'll find a little crack of open water up or downstream that they can get to with a long swim I don't know though because all of this ice on the river here this is all backed up for a long way to the weir down here. I'll, I'll take you over to the weir. We'll go look at that right now. And I'll show you what I mean, but uh, this water, the top of the water is not moving because the ice is backed up against the, the weir. So we'll go look at the weir. We will look at the food cache, um, materials that I took just to, just to make sure. They weren't raided, but I don't think so. It just doesn't look like they were able to stash any more here after that last uh, food that I took from them. So yeah, I think... Well, we'll see if things warm up. But I suspect this is it for the season for them. They're locked in, and so that buys some time to consider how to create a kind of a naturalist run volunteer program here um, that's going to discourage the beavers from basically I think if, if they would have been discouraged at first from building their lodge the the whole food cache thing would have never happened so I think each of these water inlets and outlets if we can just make sure that no lodges are being built um, and do that through through regular monitoring, I, th I think we'll be okay. Anyway, let's go check the food cache and look at the weir. Someone sent me a really peculiar question several days ago in relation to the video I did where I was talking about whether we are behaving as humans 
and identifying as humans anymore or whether we are moving actually toward identifying as earthlings uh, in a global kind of community. And the question was, how do I feel about the fact <laughs> that um, Muslims are, 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 have a higher birth rate or having more, more uh, birds on average than anyone else, um, any other kind of religion or faith or culture, whatever, Muslims are uh, being reproduced more often than anyone else. How do I feel about that? And <laughs> so I've thought about it a few days and I was considering making a separate video about it, but I don't know that I really have that much to say on the matter that I can't say in just really a few short sentences. <laughs> um, hold up, we got the beaver food cache right here. Check it out. Okay, so I dropped off the bulk of the material right here, pulled it off the truck. It uh, obviously is still in one pile. There was a little bit clinging to the trailer of the Jeep that I put over here. Looks like that's still there. So yeah, doesn't look like the beavers came and took their food at all. Um, that answers that question. But yeah, the whole Muslim thing. What do I think about this? That Muslims are being born. A lot of Muslims are being born. Maybe uh, the birth rates are beyond anybody else's and soon the world will be run by Muslims. <laughs> um, how do I feel about this? Okay, I'm just going to get right down to the point instead of making a separate video on this and say that First of all, Muslims are not born. <laughs> uh, human beings are born, and then we can be trained to be things like Muslims or Christians or what have you. Um, all of those, all of those religions and stuff like that. These are not genetic. These are things that we're trained in, and in my estimation, in the current context where there is so much global communication online. And we're learning about one another very quickly and we're spending more time in context uh, with peoples of different cultures from around the world. You know, even here in Lethbridge, we got so many different refugee and immigrant populations here and everything's mixing. Um, in my estimation, the young, the young generations coming up are not really going to stand for the bullshit of the of the religions in general, whether it be Muslim, whether it be um, Judaism, whether it be some Christianity. To me, they all got the same heart. They all got the same extremism. They all got the same association with violence. They're all all those religions that are that are that their heart is it comes from that area. Um, <laughs> I got, I got really no use for any of them. So am I particularly afraid that, that uh, the world is gonna be run by Muslims and that we're, you know, we're gonna step back into, a, into an age where, you know, women don't have any rights and, you know, this and that. Persecution of Christians. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christians are still running around the world killing everybody for resources. They've been fighting for hundreds of years. We're out. But we are leaving soldiers to secure the oil. Now, we may have to fight for the oil. It's okay. Maybe somebody else wants the oil, in which case they have a hell of a fight. But there's massive amounts of oil. Just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm not on anybody's side that's one of those major religions. You know, unless perhaps... I don't know if you're able to hear me with this wind, but um, Buddhism maybe is one that is a little bit more tolerant. But in general, I think people are people. And um, 
and there's extreme weirdos and violent people and abusers and uh, there's terror in everybody and every everywhere everything um, the more you know your your mind is immersed immersed in some kind of factionalism political religious um, racial and what have you the more uh, you're gonna be a problem for those who want kind of a more peaceful future for humanity and I, I don't think you're gonna be tolerated any e either way if you're uh, if you're of that ilk I think the future generations even the current generations the young people we're done with that I count myself <laughs> but uh, I didn't grow up with any religion you know and so I think I can see through a lot that people that grew up in one sector or another and have that factional stuff embedded in their mind I think I can see through a lot of things that, that you're not aware of and the question itself is um, you know it, it's like I say it's a ridiculous question Muslims are not born human beings are so and, I, and I'm not afraid any more afraid of Muslims being born than I am of Christians we'll just put it that way <laughs> here's the weir So you can see, obviously, that it provides a pretty good obstacle for the, the surface ice and, you know, an ice wall is built along the weir. That's not going to change. It's just going to stay ice from the weir back. Usually it goes all the way back. When I was living in Riverstone, um, we didn't really have many open water pockets except for way down by the canyons and so um, I would go visit at night to watch the geese come into those open water cracks by the canyons but that's a ways up river there was something I saw over here by the the larger city water intake along the canal looked like some kind of animal was coming up onto the bank so let's go let's go take a look at the prints there and see what we can deduce. All right, this is what I was referring to here. You can see that some animals been coming down. Well, I already see what it is. It's deer. They've been coming down to the river here or to the canal stream. Maybe taking a sip. No, they're crossing as well. So shallow enough in here probably for a good crossing hey you know what it's a shortcut back for me maybe i'll take off my gum boots here and uh cross in the water if a deer can cross why can't ryan right wonder how shallow it is might be too high for gum boots looks like it but uh definitely not more than above my knees so I'm gonna take off my shoes and just cross Well, my toes are like ice cubes now, perhaps a little bit too literally, <laughs> so I'm thinking I might go home and, and warm up my toes, maybe grab some lunch and decide from there whether to just stay home or go back out. 
throw the insoles of my, uh, throw the, uh, the insulate stuff from my boots into the dryer or something, get them a little bit warmed up, and then if I want to go out again, I can. Still a lot of daylight left, and I really don't want to spend it indoors, but Poli probably could use a, a piss break, and, <laughs> and I could go put that tree up, so let's go home, and maybe we'll go back out later. Holy up and just put this tree in the backyard. Hey, Polio, come on out. Yeah, I can cut cut off the bottom tonight, a little bit later when the sun is more going down. I don't want to waste daylight. <laughs> now that I'm home, I already want to turn around and go back outside. I don't need warm warm toes. I'm warm enough. Hey, poly boy. My poly boy. Oh, I bought you some bologna. <laughs> poly loves his bologna. He hasn't had bologna for like two days. He's had to rely on chicken and terrible things like that. <laughs> Don't go too far, mister. Figure I'll kind of compromise with the boots. Took the insoles out. Look at these things, how worn out and, and messed up they are. Look at the heels. <laughs> Yeah, these are old, old. My gum boots and my and my thin slit liners are old, like more than a decade. It's time to replace. I actually had some money set aside just for that, but being thrifty, I'm trying to apparently make them last one more season. I don't know, but I'm gonna leave those here with the snakes in the laundry room. Um, to dry out and I'll just put on some wool socks or something in my gumboots. I think that's my answer for the afternoon. Just walking in, back down at the Alexander Wilderness Park. Same place as yesterday. I'm not gonna look at the deer this afternoon. Fairly confident they're eating leaves. After talking with Carol this morning, you know, she has a lot of deer come into her yard. The back of her, in her backyard, she's got a bit of a, bit of a forest. <laughs> so she observes deer all the time and she says every year when she rakes up the leaves, puts them in bags, the deer come along and use their feet to break open the bags and eat her leaves. So that being the case, I still think that this year they're getting an extra bunch of nutrients from the leaves that are available because they fell while they were still green. Yeah. So anyway, nothing with the deer today unless they just present to me, but I'm on my way to the river where I hear all the geese and no doubt other waterfowl. I just came through this forest of young trees, young poplars, and I'm kind of using the last edge of them here as cover. I can hear the waterfowl out there. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to see them unless I move closer. That might scare them up though.
Some of the mallards and golden eyes seem to be making a downstream exodus for reasons unknown. Probably because of me. Still here by the last kind of young tree, so exposed. Geese don't care so much, they got lots of numbers there. Ducks are a bit more sweet. And I'm getting the message that my battery is about to fail because of cold. Shoot. Cold are the footsies, actually not too bad, but a little bit damp, a little bit cold. I'm going to be glad to get home now, have some food, throw that tree up and relax. Might do a review video on the new tree stand that I bought, see how that goes. It's, it's a different tree stand technology than I've used previously, so... Got the Christmas tree up and unfurling from its time wrapped up. I did do a separate video on the new stand, which worked pretty good, actually. I'm pretty happy with that stand. Any case, here is my, really my first meal of the day. Breakfast, lunch, dinner of champions, seven mozzarella sticks with some leftover chipotle sauce <laughs> oh I know bring the criticism bring the criticism Wow. I 